What is up, my brothers from another mother? We got a request here from a viewer who is asking the legitimate question and has some links for me tied around what's the point of a long-term relationship for a man, especially if it doesn't seem to benefit them over a longer term. Uh, this will be a good one, so stay tuned for this in just a sec. Before we hop into it, uh, channel sponsors, Tactical Soap Company. Need to shout out because one, it's a natural product. Two, it's infused with pheromones. These are things that you don't normally get when you go to the Costco and pick up the giant you know, pack of 50 pieces of soap. And number three, more importantly, if you look at my scars right now, by the end of the winter, they're usually quite red and dry and flaky because I'm scratching the crap out of them. They, they, it, like normal soap really tends to dry out my skin. So I got to hand it to Scott. I don't know why this like formulation seems to work so well. Uh, I've had other people message me as well saying they've had psoriasis and it, and it really helped out. So check that out. Uh, if you've enjoyed the creation of content on my channel, help support it. There's a coupon code Cooper. If you check out, you'll get 10% off with the link. Uh, click the link that's pinned in the description in the top comment. It'll bring you to this page. Um, what I recommend is a Trifecta six pack. Um, what you do is get kind of a sampler of the three different scents. Yes, it costs more money than regular soap, but it is a far higher quality product. So again, thanks for uh, sponsoring the channel, Scott. Greatly appreciate it. Guys, support the creation. Check out with some soap. Let's hop straight into today's request, which comes from a gentleman. We'll leave him anonymous. He goes by a handle, so it doesn't really matter. Uh, but he came across this graph that's been thrown around some red pulse circles, and he wants me to go after the graph and analyze the contents of that post with some of my opinions. So I'll hop into that in a second. Let me just keep reading it. Uh, so is this the end game for most relationships, he says. Do most relationships have a finite time before they're past their due and you're forced to either leave or find another woman or be subject of disrespect once she has locked you down? Uh, looking at one particular stat on divorce statistics, one particular stat stood out to me. Uh, over a 40-year period, 67% of first marriages terminate. This is from point 17 from this link, and I'll get to that in a second. With stats like that, it does seem that for the vast majority of time, women will terminate commitment-bound relationships like marriage at some point. Uh, this is true. Women terminate um, marriages about, the argument is somewhere between 70 and 80% of the time. So uh, let's say seven to eight out of 10 times women are initiating divorces. There's a lot of incentive for women uh, through the divorce process. I've mentioned this before in many videos. Um, it, it does encourage them to behave in a certain way that benefits them. And there's a lot more in divorce for women than what there, than what there is in it for men. I've, I've, I've literally heard women in the coffee shop, overheard them while I'm working, say things like, you know, you could take half a shit and the kids and not have to put up with his dumb ass either. You know, Becky or Susie or whatever you want to use. But um, that is the general notion. He's not that far off. So I got to be honest with you, dude. Like, I appreciate with what you're coming at here. This is a great conversation piece for today's video. Uh, but I also hear somewhat conflicting opinion from the other red pillars that as long as you do things like hold your frame, you can stay alpha in a long-term relationship marriage. Okay, I I'm going to say this again, and let me just go here full screen because I think it it's, you know, it's an important point. I've said it before. I'm going to emphasize this again. It is a lot harder for a guy to do well over a long-term relationship in a monogamous exclusive type of marriage, LTR, non-cohabitating LTR, than what it is to spin plates. The reason for that is, and we'll get into the graph in a second, which kind of illustrates this, and I'll add some other talking points as we kind of go through it, is um, the ROI goes down for dudes. Uh, as, you know, as my good buddy Paul likes to say, you know, you get married for 20 years, you do all the right things, you're monogamous, you never cheat on you, you're providing all that, all that sort of stuff. And if it doesn't work out for her, or if she gets bored, she can leave and take half your shit. But your reward for being monogamous to her for the last 20 years of life and giving her everything is the same old chick you've had for the last 20 years sort of thing. So it's not like there's a great deal of upside for men when it comes to scenarios like this. He goes on to say, aside from certain exceptions, is this really a realistic goal over the course of many years where things in life can go terribly wrong within a time span? Yeah, I mean, the longer you're doing something, the greater the chance of something going wrong obviously is. I mean, the greater the chance of you making a mistake. It's the reason why they run um, certain jobs like air traffic controllers in shorter shifts, right? That, you know, they want you to be alert and awake. And it's not like, you know, an air traffic controller's job is the same thing as a marriage, but you get the general idea. Um, the notion of holding frame and staying alpha is not going to be easy over a longer term basis. Uh, you are going to slip up. It is going to be a lot more work. And the ROI, like my buddy Paul says, is relatively low for men. Same with applying tools like Dread Game. Okay, so he's so he's fairly well versed. Dread Game for those of you guys that are relatively new to the channel, you can watch you know the Red Pill 
uh, playlist if you want to find it to get more information. But it's basically uh, creating a sense of dread in your relationship so that it creates a higher level of desire for you. Uh, you know, an example of that, one that a lot of guys like to use is your wife's not banging you, for example. Well, how do you create dread? Well, you start going to the gym. You know, you leave your gym bag at the front door. You go out and you go do your thing and you come back and see if she's open to it then. Um, but the argument that a lot of other guys make is, dude, that sounds like a lot of work for a very low return on your investment. Anyway, this is not about dread game, but you get the general idea if you're newer to this. According to him, most red pill, most red pill tool guys use eventually lose effectiveness and over a long run, as she gets more... Uh, and more locked down. Do you agree with that? Yeah, I'm going to agree with that because um, tools like Dread, for example, will lose their effectiveness. If you've been with somebody for 20 years versus 20 months, it's going to make a difference for sure. Absolutely. Uh, like anything else, over time, it does lose its effectiveness. You know, it's just the nature of those sorts of events. Uh, if it's possible, is it even worth the effort to apply tools like Dread Game during your entire duration of your LTR marriage necessarily? Uh, to keep your perceived value and alphaness in her eyes. Yeah, is it worth it? Yeah, it's 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 certainly going to be worth it if it delays her, you know, interest in wanting to divorce you next year, maybe puts it off 20 years. Um, is it is it useful? Absolutely. Um, is it a lot of work? Yeah, dude, it's way more work. And like I said earlier, the ROI is lower than spinning plates. Spinning plates gives you options. It gives you the ability to maneuver. It gives you the ability not to be locked down by any one plate, for example. Whereas uh, when you get into an LTR marriage, if you screw up, you know, you could lose half your shit and not have access to your kids. Um, so to say, is it even worth it? I think the question that you should be asking yourself, guys, is do I want kids bad enough? The only real point of living in a way that the state views as a marriage or marriage itself is to raise useful children. Um, that's it. That's really it. So you shouldn't be asking about questions like, uh, you know, long-term access to, um, you know, regular intimacy or anything like that. It should be questions like, do you really want to raise kids? Uh, and then that's when you should be looking at things like living in a way the state views as a marriage. Let me finish up here. I assume that that's why the red pill advocates for spinning plates to address this. Uh, that seems the easier alternative to maintain and move on when the disrespect starts than being a rock that gets slowly eroded by her waves of betatization slowly but surely. All right, so the first link that he's given me here is the betatization process, which let me open the tab here, is here. And what I'll do is I'll put these links in the bottom of the um, video in the description and the pinned comment. Uh, so this came off a, looks like a blog post from Personal Power Meditation. So credit to the source. Uh, now this was posted nine years ago. This is not new. Uh, you know, the betatization by a thousand concessions, by a thousand paper, paper cuts, whatever it is that you want to call it. In this particular post, and it's not that long, so I'm going to read through it. In this particular post, it's just called the betatization curve. And it has two distinct areas. The red area, let's just assume this is the red pill area, uh, which are the good times. And then there's the bad times. And on this axis, you've got time on the bottom and male power at the top. Um, I would probably uh, retitle this more uh, frame or, or your alpha card or your alpha credit, you know, whatever it is you want to call it. But anyway, so take a good look at this curve, it says, and remember it well. As soon as you enter into a relationship with a woman, this curve becomes the de facto symbol for how that relationship will progress. You guys with me so far? Making sense, right? Because this is, this is something familiar to a lot of men. I've been talking a lot on the phone with Bliss lately. Don't know who that is. I guess he's somebody in the discussion forum discussing the betatization process and how it manifests in relationships. It was especially poignant for him, having just exited a two-year relationship where he was heavily baited to the full extent of the curb. Being that the dude is a player, he is back on his feet now like some mad wolf, and he had a lot to say to me on the phone regarding my relationship. Since I just passed point three on the curve, which will we be which we will be explaining in this post so the author of this post is suggesting he's at point three and he was having a conversation with a guy uh, i guess who's part of the discussion forum that just ended a two-year relationship that found himself at the end of the betatization curve this dynamic is called the betatization process this is what they're calling it again betatization by a thousand concessions whatever you want to label it i've also called it from pet to plow horse and what the pet segment looks like up here is you've been dating for a few months. She wants to introduce you to her friends at, you know, uh, or, you know, friends or family at Easter, Christmas, Thanksgiving, whatever it is. And she walks you in the door and goes, hey, everybody, this is Kevin, VP of sales, the guy that I told you about. And you're her pet at this time. 
by this point over here you're some schlep at the grocery store several years later pushing around a buggy uh you know with two kids two small kids screaming in the buggy and another bun in the oven with her screaming at you telling you you put the wrong diapers in the buggy and you're a complete moron so that's what the process would look like over a longer term for pet to plow horse let's carry on though so he says brilliant minds such as franco on fast seduction as well as other relationship savvy posters on that board have long discussed the betatization process why it happens and how to slow it down a consensus has emerged once entered the betatization process cannot be stopped all women have the betatization process as part of their dna master tape i don't know that i agree with this guys i wouldn't i wouldn't call it the betatization process as part of her dna but women have an innate ability to betatize uh men if we let them okay um i know that there's some argument you said in the email itself that if you maintain dread and frame and that sort of thing you can push it off or delay it um and it, it is somewhat useful so i tend to agree and disagree with this i agree with the sense that it's going to look something like this over a course of time in an ltr especially if you're bad at uh maintaining frame and dealing with a long-term relationship and this sort of thing can accelerate if you get married quickly if you live together very quickly sort of thing ideally you can stay in the red zone uh in a, you know if you want to get into an ltr you can stay in this red zone here uh by non-cohabitation ltrs uh that would be the best way to go in my opinion anyway we'll hop hop back into this thing and carry back on Another hugely important point is that is often overlooked that you yourself also have a bi biochemical cues stored on the DNA master tape that will drastically alter your behavior in accordance with the betatization process. Since you only have control over your own behavior, this post explains the critical points in a relationship and how to best handle them on your end to slow down but not stop the process, the progress of the, of the curve. So the author is adamant that this will happen to everybody okay points on the curve explained so while the betatization process cannot be stopped there's specific points in the relationship that will determine the speed of decline of the man's personal power in a relationship at these points certain gambles can be applied which can have three possible outcomes destruction of the relationship slowing down of the curve speeding up of the curve so um there's no deceleration option here with the author's point okay uh there's another option that can be applied at any time you end the relationship don't forget that you always have that option also don't be surprised when you're biochemically blinded by your own emotions so that you do forget to, that you have this option the points in this curve are described as follows so we're getting into point one now point one is up at the top over here in the good times uh contract of exclusivity the period of flux on this graph before point one is reached symbolizes the circuit two domination submission game that got her and you attracted in the first place the exclusivity agreement symbolizes uh, the end of this period and the beginning of circuit number four social sexual conditioning for child rearing the point marks your entry into the curve in biological terms it symbolizes a discussion to pair bond and raise a family the betatization process arises from the switchover of prerogatives the contract is entered explicitly by verbal agreement which is something along the lines and what this looks like is you're standing by the front door and you're seeing her off one night after a few months of dating and she kind of leans in and she goes so where do we stand with this relationship and you kind of look at her and you go well the way i see it is we're standing at the front door and i'm seeing you off sort of thing um now if you explicitly state at that time well let's be in a monogamous relationship then you're ventured into that point i mean and his contention would be real um it's generally women that will bring that question up it's not usually guys that will have the where do we stand talk but this is what he's talking about here with a verbal agreement or implicitly by spending the majority of your sexual time with her so if you've been dating for 90 days for example and you're seeing her like once a week and that increases after three months to i don't know two or three times a week uh it's implicitly stated is what the author's saying by spending more time together i tend to agree with both those things you know with some slight variations but anyway the gamble says uh, refuse to enter the contract by continuing to see sleep with flirt with other women possible result she ends a relationship there and then which she suggests is rare uh, you slow down the curve by keeping her in circle circuit two game longer very doable but requires you actually go out and do it most men are lazy well as soon as you declare monogamy this early on in a relationship i don't know what he's talking about here if this is like a, a month or six months or a year uh, but certainly as you uh declare that you're no longer seeing other people um the notion of competition anxiety kicks in or, or or kicks out uh competition anxiety exists between two people 
simply when, well, you know, it's as simple as if you're seeing her once a week and she wants to connect with you, and let's say your date night's like Monday night or whatever, and uh, she wants to connect with you on a Friday or something like that, but you got another date on Friday. Uh, competition and anxiety will exist because Friday is a very popular night during the week for, you know, for us to go out, for us to meet other people, to go to bars, for dates and stuff like that. And if you're not making yourself available, uh, without explicitly stating what you're doing. It doesn't matter if you're hanging out with the boys, writing a book, reading a book, going to the bar, going out on a date. It doesn't matter. But if you're not explicitly stating what you're doing, but by your actions, you're unavailable, competition anxiety exists within her, which will keep her on her best behavior. Uh, I did a video on that specific topic. Let me just make a quick note here at the 15-minute mark. So I'll put a card up on the top right. Check that out. Right. Let's carry on here. Okay. So he also says, however, you, sorry, however, the more time you spend with her, the more you'll be put on the curve anyway. Your behavior will be modified to the point whereby you'll be simulating exclusivity by spending so much time with her. She can continue her beta betatization behaviors by assuming that you are exclusive in which turn, in, sorry, which in turn actually forces you back on the curve. So he's basically saying you keep seeing other women spinning plates or you accept that you're an exclusive relationship. Either way, you're kind of going down the curve because she either thinks you're exclusive, whether you're not on your end, but she thinks you are. So she'll increase the betatization point. Don't totally agree with it, but let's keep going. Two, marking her territory. Totally agree with this. This is a standard operating procedure for a lot of women when it comes to uh, dating on a long-term basis. This is a point whereby she solidifies the exclusivity by using ritual behaviors. She will start leaving things in your room like pieces of jewelry, a watch, clothing, toothbrush, something in the shower. You guys know exactly what I'm talking about. You've all seen it happen. She'll mark you physically by biting or scratching you during sex. Uh, we've seen that. She'll openly seek out examples of you interacting with other women and attempt to put a stop to it. Now, this was written in 2011 or 2010. Social media wasn't that popular at this time. So what this would look like today would probably be you being a thirsty beta, liking and commenting on other women's posts on social media. So this is what he's talking about here. And I agree with all these points here. A point uh, you could have avoided had you not entered into the exclusivity contract. It makes a valid point, right? I mean, as soon as you declare that, the competition anxiety drops. It's just the reality of it. All these behaviors can seem cute and adorable. And a lot of guys make this mistake, fellas. I totally agree with what he's saying here. Uh, I've fallen into this trap as well, or you think it's cute and adorable that they do things like this. Uh, but you'll see what he's talking about in a second. You are wired to find it cute so that the betatization process can continue unhindered in order for you to raise a child. <laughs> <laughs> now, I think that the analysis that some of these guys that write in this space, and I'm going to do a video at, at one point talking about the amount of time these guys talk about chasing women, because it does get ridiculous sometimes. And the over analysis that they make in these scopes can get quite comical. So I'm just going to say that for now. I'm going to get into a separate video at some point on that topic. But make no mistake, he carries on. This is what she's doing. She's putting on the shackles to keep you locked into this curve. So around point two, he's suggesting it starts to decline. She's leaving crap around your place. Uh, she's noting who you're liking and commenting on on social media or who's liking and commenting on your posts, uh, what you might be up to, uh, leaving jewelry around, shampoo in the shower. So if you got other girls coming over, they're going to notice it. It's, it's, it's like a pissing on the territory sort of behavior. The marking of of the territory is what he calls it. So I agree with this over here. Totally agree. And does it betatize men over time? Uh, it can. I don't think necessarily that it needs to, if I'm being honest, gentlemen. Gamble, he says, keep on seeing flirting with other women. Possible result, she finds out, ends a relationship, says I'm rare. Curve is slowed down by the drama cause. Meanwhile, her girlfriends are telling her what a bastard you are in an effort to prop up her up the curve. Girls work together frequently to help strengthen each other's curves. I think this is a little too, dude, you're reading a little too far into stuff um, when you're right like this, if I'm being honest here. But um, as far as this notion goes, um, yeah, if, if uh, now here's the thing, guys, a woman would rather be, would rather share a high value alpha than to be straddled with a faithful beta loser. Um, you know, they don't want to, they're, they're okay with sharing a man that they deem a high value alpha the problem is is that as guys get into ltrs and guys that don't understand female nature and the baseline operating system that women use to govern their lives and make decisions and how they do things it's very easy for them to fall right off this cliff and straight down the bottom um so i'm in agreement with what's happening here i'm not in full agreement with 
the uh, possible outcomes or the results. Um, a man that is on his purpose, that is chasing his excellence, that is putting a dent in the universe, doesn't need to worry about these things as much as the writer is suggesting. Um, let's carry on though. You can buy a lot of time by using a strategy depending on the woman and what strategies her friends will be enforcing with her. The strategy causes a lot of headaches and drama. However, you must be extremely emotionally resilient or conscious free to pull it off. Plenty of guys do it. Most guys can't, however, and will happily settle for exclusivity with one woman because they believe it leads to an easy life of sex on tap with no headaches. It doesn't. He's right. It certainly doesn't. I agree with that 100%. Part of the point of this post is the good life with women is a fallacy. Even the good ones are just operating slower versions of the curve. Where's the conversation piece in this article about being on on your mission, guys? Like, where is the conversation piece about you making yourself your own mental point of origin and pursuing that thing in your entire life? This is a lot of talk in this post about chasing tail, um, or or dealing with chasing tail, or um, you know, kind of like the black pill approach to what chasing tail can lead you to if you chase it too long, for example, if that makes sense. Uh, number three. So where are we on, on the curve number three? Second last spot. We're almost done this list here, gentlemen. Stick with me. The first successful denial of sex. This is always a bad sign, okay? Uh, if you make an attempt to be intimate with your chick and she denies you, that is a bad sign. Let's read this. The girl knows that if she wants to keep a guy around, she better make the deal pretty sweet, and that means providing lots of sex. However, the further down the curve you go, the more invested in her you've become, and she realizes one day that she can deny you sex, often do seemingly good reason, period pains, or she was asleep, and you won't leave. So <laughs> there's lots of women that will sleep with you on their period. Lots, if they deem you a high enough value man. But what ends up happening probably by this point, which is not being pointed to, is uh, men are not usually denied intimacy unless they're living with a woman. Okay. So if you're, so if you're cohabitating, you're not married, um, or you're living under the same rooftop, maybe you're in the engagement period. I don't know. This is usually when this starts to happen. And that's mostly because, and, and again, the card was up at the top, right at the 15 minute mark, uh, because of competition, anxiety being relaxed. So you can't avoid this, you know, if you just don't live together, if I'm being honest, it helps you maintain frame a lot easier. So. So far, you've accomplished the terms of the deal based on the idea that you'll get sex on tap. So he's basically talking about how, you know, men, beta men, you know, more specifically, have this expectation that if you're in an exclusive relationship, you've got unlimited access to unlimited sex. But uh, when you slowly go, slowly go down the betatization curve, uh, that changes. And there's a lot of events that happen down this curve, gentlemen, a lot of events. It's... Um, it might start up here with his point, but in between one and two, let's say, it might be, um, can you wear this uh, pink t-shirt and go to the uh, Women's March and wear a pink pussy hat? Uh, let's go vegan together. Uh, let's go to Woofstock with all my girlfriends and hold up some signs and hang it, you know, hand out doggy treats while all these fluffy little white dogs wearing sweaters look all cute and we'll hold hands and sing Kumbaya. And you keep doing all these little things all the way down the curve. And down over here, she's like, don't brush your teeth in the bedroom. Make sure you brush teeth in the bathroom because going to make a mess on the floor and over here it's don't put the whites in with this color in the laundry and blah 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 so like it's a number of different things like i said earlier it's it's like a betatization process by a thousand paper cuts death by a thousand paper cuts so you must find it hard in the early months never to allow her to die you know, never to allow her to deny you sex guys the way that like women only deny you sex if they don't value you. it's as simple as that if she admires you, if she sees you as a man of vision and purpose that is chasing his excellence and putting a dent in the universe, she will want to be with you. She will throw herself at you if you're doing those things. Um, an excellent test, and I'll give this to you right now, an excellent test is if you track your woman's cycle, and I've talked about this in a private video in my community, why this is important. So if you're not in my community, join. The card will be up at the top right. For those guys that have seen it, they'll know exactly what I'm talking about. If you track it and at the peak of ovulatory cycle you don't make any moves towards her to be intimate whatsoever and she doesn't or even worse she's nagging you around that time that's a really bad sign that things are going sideways or she's probably either looking at somebody else she's got another apple of her eye or potentially even porking somebody else so you can use that test because at that point of the cycle if she values you she sees you as a man of vision and purpose a guy that's chasing excellence putting a dent in the universe she sees you as a man that other women want to be with and other men want to be she will be all over you like white on rice i promise you 
Okay, it's really as simple as that. So this whole denial, like never, never allow her to, to deny you sex. This is a very blue pill plugged in beta kind of comment to make if I'm being honest here, but it is what it is. Saying no and then giving you sex anyway is fine. Uh, no, it's not. That's like negotiated desire, dude. I mean, you know, we talked about that one before. I know Rolo's got a post on it. Anytime you uh, negotiate desire, it's a declaration of powerlessness uh, and obligation. You know, the compliance or that obligation just leads to obligated compliance, which creates resentment. Doesn't work, right? It's got to be natural. It's got to be organic. I got a chapter in my book that I'm writing about this specific point. You guys will see it when it comes out. Anyway, saying gamble at this point, where do we at? Number three, the denial of sex. Um, she ends a relationship, which is rare. She agrees for now to avoid your drama, but realizes denial of sex. She says no. So again, we're getting into kind of like a weaker angle here. I don't like these uh, potential outcomes because it because it doesn't put you first, guys. It doesn't make you you know your own mental point of origin. It's basically you in her frame, and that's where this post starts to go sideways around point three. If I'm being honest, point four, actively disrespecting you. I have put this mark at the end of good times and he's right. This is, this is a very bad indication. Things are going sideways or the betatization process is well on the way. Uh, I've put this mark at the end of good times to the start of the bad times, which is when she even stops common courtesies towards you. She might start seeing you less, cutting you off any remaining sex she is giving you. <laughs> you can, you can tell that it's a weaker guy that wrote this. Anybody that sees uh, a woman cutting off remaining sex, she is giving you. That anybody that uses the term giving you sex, fellas, stop using that term. Remove it from your vocabulary. Sounds weak as shit. Okay. She might start actively going out with her friends instead, seeing you, cuckolding you. That's not what cuckolding is. But anyway, uh, she might insinuate affairs emotionally to affect you. Uh, she might treat you like a child. She might start cutting you off in your personal line. What I've seen is this does happen and it doesn't necessarily look like this. I agree with the title. I don't agree with the description with what he's using here. Anything you see in a typical bad marriage is symbolized in this area of the curve. Agree with that. Gamble, none, you're effed. All you can do is fighters attempt, fight her attempts to disrespect you in an effort to slow down the increase in severity. Women don't disrespect men that they value and admire, fellas. They don't. Um, if, if she's disrespecting you, she's checked out of the relationship. I'll be honest with you. If she's insulting you in front of family and friends or trying to disparage you or say things to embarrass you or insult you or, or uh, insinuate whether it's overtly or covertly that you're incompetent or unable to do certain things or why can't you be more like Bob? One of my favorite ones is when she compares your worst to another guy's best. So successful entrepreneur leaves his socks on the floor making a million dollars a year. Uh, his chick is bitching at him about leaving his socks on the floor and says, why can't you be more like John? He doesn't leave his socks on the floor. He puts them in the hamper. But guess what? John works for the city making $40,000 a year, uh, you know, driving some city rig back and forth 18.5 kilometers every month. And all he ever talks about when you see him at barbecues is which route he takes from his home to his office job. And if he makes a slight detour at the coffee shop, he saves 0.3 seconds, right? So when women com compare your worst to some other guy's best, that's another very, very bad sign. Let's keep going. This is turning out to be a longer request, guys, but it's, but it's a good one. So he's getting into the uh, time spans and the good times and the bad times. So it's an interesting post. I'll link it in the um, description. Check it out for yourself. I want to hear what you guys think in the comments. Uh, the other link that this gentleman left me was here from a divorce law firm, which happens to be this here. And it's divorce stats from over 115 studies, facts and rates for 2018. And the point that uh, stuck, stood out for him was 0.17 on this list over here. And this is a long list. Over a 40 year period, 67% of first marriages terminate. Yeah, that's a, that's a pretty sad number. Um, there's a lot of interesting components to this uh, study here. Well, it's a summary of a lot of the information, but I'll link that as well. You guys can check that out for yourself. So to your point, your end question is, I assume the red pill advocates for spinning plates to address this. That seems to be an easier alternative to maintain. That's I'm in full agreement. Uh, move on when the disrespect starts, then being a rock that gets slowly eroded by her waves of betatization. So to answer your question, Yes, my friend, it is far more work. And this is a good illustration of the amount of work you have to put in to maintain frame. You know, I get accused a lot. Rich, you talk a lot about chasing tail. 
Not really, dudes. I'm talking more about you guys being on your purpose and your mission, really. Um, I know that guys want to be with women and you want to be intimate with women. And I don't blame you. You know, um, it's it's kind of hardwired into our DNA. You know, our our sexual strategy as men is to scatter seed. It's it's unlimited access to unlimited women. Uh, that's that's what our sexual prerogative is. There's nothing wrong with that. That's how we've been built. That's how we've been hardwired. You know, women's uh, uh, you know, sexual programming is really built around the notion of open hypergamy, right? Always being able to lock down the best providing male that she can get. So that's the reality of the sexual marketplace, gentlemen. And when you understand who you are as a man, and when you have an understanding of female nature, you can, and I mean this, you can put yourself as your own mental point of war, and you can have yourself as a priority in your life. You can put a dent in the universe. You can have women, lots of women, admiring you for what it is that you're doing and other men want to be you and other women want to be with you. Ideally, what women want is they want a man that other men want to be, other women want to bang, but they don't want you to exercise that option to spread your seed. So there you have it. That's really the summary. I could have summed up this entire video in that 30 second bit. It's as simple as that. You want to maintain frame, put yourself first. If you cannot maintain frame in a long-term relationship, don't get married. Don't live with the women. Don't live in a way that the state views as a marriage. Don't do any of those things, right? Spin plates until you figure it out. Because the ROI on a long-term relationship, if you screw it up, is incredibly high, like bad, okay? It's very, very bad. The cost is very, very high is what I meant to say. Uh, the risk is very, very high for men with low reward. And uh, the risk is very low for women with high reward, especially if you're a guy that has a good job. And that's how things work. You know, women generally tend to uh, marry up. Let me show you one quick stat here uh, on this chart that we got. And U.S. divorce rate by occupation, the divorce rate of dancers and bartenders, fellas, <laughs> they're at the top of the chart and massage therapists. Gee, are these people... Be, these the, these women, because women initiate seven or eight out of 10 divorces, are these women uh, using their sexual attention around their jobs, dancing, bartending, and touching you to massage you? It happens. That is the reality of the world. It's an interesting study, guys. I want you to read both those articles. I've droned on about this for about 30 minutes on mine, so I'm going to cut it short at this. Before I end real quick, if you'd like to make a request, entrepreneursandcars.com forward slash request, top right of the screen. You can click that. Stuck on something, sponsor a video, make a PayPal donation, name, email. Next step, it'll give you the opportunity to uh, email me what your request is. Also, my men's community is available. These prices are going up soon, by the way. Uh, we're filling up, but there's a premium video library stuff that's not available on the channel. Monthly Q&A sessions that I do exclusively at the first of the month. Private discussion forum. We use Facebook and a website. VIP access to live broadcasts. VIP access to events. And discounted monthly coaching rates on a one-on-one -on -one basis. Grab a basic membership and jump in and get access to all those things. It is an amazing place to be. Hope to see you guys in there. See you in the next video. Peace.